Good evening, everyone, and welcome to, whew, I'm sorry, it's just been a long week. I'm sure it's been a long week for all of you, <laughs> but welcome to our show. I have uh, got somebody on the road right now who is so dedicated. He's coming on to, to basically just talk to everyone about what's going on and hopefully give us some encouragement because I know a lot of people are disappointed and disgusted. Well, um, we've got Jonathan right there. Say hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Hello, guys. How you doing? Hey. Welcome to our episode. Yes. What, what number are we on? What number is this? Is this 26? I, I, I think we are 26 or 27. Okay, cool. We are getting <laughs> up there. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, getting uh, up there. 27. There we go. <laughs> 27. Uh, on this 27th episode, there is so much going on in the world. I won't even know where to start. So let's let's just start at the beginning. Why? Why is this happening? What caused this? What's your thoughts on that, Jonathan? Well, the, the, the chaos that is breaking out across the United States is a wreck. Result of come across yeah. as a bad thing, and it is. But in reality, I hope you can hear me. I'm west of Phoenix, headed to Los Angeles, and I might have some internet problems, but we're going to go ahead and go through with it, and hopefully, you know, we get you know, some good service. But anyway, this is a direct result of Democrat leadership. Mm -hmm. We give are You're cutting out there. Let's see if you come back in. There you go. It's a hard thing destroying commercial property, property that don't belong to you. But but for the most part, there's something good that's gonna come out of this. God says where good is, evil is always present. So when evil is rain, when evil reigns. For a season, there's something great coming behind this. Yeah. It's really horrible, but there's a lot to learn about what is taking place right now. As I said, we, we put our faith in government over God, and this is the result of doing that. I hope you heard what I said. I heard a lot of what you said, especially about putting your faith in government over God, using government as a false idol, not not putting God first in everything we do. I mean, most problems, actually all problems can be solved or worked through if you put God first and you follow the biblical principles. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that they say, oh, no, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, did, they weren't derived from Christianity. But if you look at them, they mirror. They are derived from Christianity. And when you try to take Christianity, biblical principles out of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, out of society, you have problems because you built this value system and what we're supposed to be uphold to or uphold ourselves to from Christianity. And when you remove that from the equation, there is no basis. There is no foundation for people to, to move up from. You can't build a house on a crack foundation. And that's kind of where we are right now. Right. Our, our foundation is uh, crack. Hey, Jonathan, why, why are violence and looting um, hypocritical response to social injustice, in your opinion? Well, it's a, uh, you're responding to something that supposedly is, is tragic. You're responding to something that actually you're supposed to grieve about. Uh, grief and anger are two different emotions. So yes. if you become angry about something that you're supposed to be grieving about, well, then that makes you disingenuous. Uh, it's no secret that most people that are out there are not truly concerned about what happened to uh our dear brother George Floyd, because if they were, you know, we would be concerned about many other things that happen within our black community. We're not, uh, we're not fooling anybody. To be honest with you, to just be frank, it's really embarrassing. We're, we're entertaining people is what we're doing. Uh, evil people. Nobody's, nobody's serious about that. Uh, what took place? Because if they were, 
we look at everything else that results in black men dying or, or black females dying, these would be our concerns. It's no way that you can turn a blind eye to the uh, taking place on the bull in the womb. You, you can't turn a blind eye to what takes place in the womb and tell me that you're serious about or feel some type of way about what happened in Minnesota. What you're telling me is that you're taking advantage of a situation that uh, that you shouldn't. So it's disingenuous, Marvina. Well, you know, it is disingenuous, and, and I firmly believe that behavior is ro rooted in belief. And I think that the problem is a lot of people haven't been taught the truth, they don't know the truth, and our pastors in place don't present the Bible in a way that is true to the Bible. It's not, there, it's not being presented authoritatively, where this is what you need to do, this is what you need to be in order to be a good person. And since we have right. taken so many uh, principles out of schools, we've taken so many right. principles out of the home, you're basically right. seeing the results of it. There's no consequences to your actions as a child. When you throw a temper tantrum, your parents say stop. And if you don't, they just sit there and let you do it. This is basically a grown up and teenage temper tantrum. Right. It has no purpose. That's, that's what it is. No, it has no purpose. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a problem and the problem lies within uh, the church, the assembly, not in the body, but in the assembly. Uh, being the church, the people is the church. The people, the church is within. Those that accept Christ are the church. However, God says don't forsake the assembly, which means the body of Christ should assemble together in fellowship. None of this is, uh, <laughs> none of this has been what it should have been. Mm -hmm. uh, people like fame, they like fortune, they like notoriety, uh, and this is what the church has become. It's become a social club. It's become a mecca for entertainment. And uh, God's word has not been delivered in the manner that he wants it delivered. Obviously. Yes. Look where we are. Uh, so what we have to do is get back to our foundation. God is not asking for much. He's not asking for your life. He's asking to be your guide through your life. Uh, people perish for lack of knowledge, Marvina, um, as it relates to God and politics. God is so into politics. Politics, here's the thing. If Satan is in politics, certainly God is. Amen. So uh, this, this idea that God is not in politics and you should keep them separate, this has what has bitten us. This is where we are. This is what has bitten us. And the church has allowed this false notion to fly. So yes. we don't talk about politics. We don't suggest who you who you should vote for. None of that. We stay out of that. Well, this is <laughs> that that's a dangerous premise. And the results are being manifested right before our eyes. Uh, God says in Ecclesiastes 10 and 2, a fool's heart inclines to the left. A wise man to the right. Amen. That, uh, and, and let me also <clears throat> say, conservatism was not born until Jesus Christ came. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everything before Jesus Christ was government oppression. Everything before Jesus came was government oppression. Government oppression. But here's the thing. When Jesus Christ came and he walked this earth, he healed physical ailments. And I, I said this early in the video, Jesus Christ healed people that were physically sick, not, not spiritually sick. Amen. Okay? It's the reason that he didn't deal with people that were spiritually sick because he hadn't become a spirit himself. Hmm. Okay. He performed miracles on physical ailments. When he died and rose from the grave and became a spirit. Now he has the God say, he give him a name above all names. <laughs> and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Now he's a spirit. Now he has authority over death, hell, and the grave. Well, what is death? Death is not just a simple 
physical death. Every, that's inevitable. But you have people that's rioting and destroying cities in Democrat cities, by the way, all of America. It's a democratic jurisdiction. These people are destroying their own city. This is death. Death of what? Death of knowledge. God says we perish because of the lack of knowledge. So this is where we are. It's not coming from the church. They're being misinformed in the in the universities and in our public schools. So this is where we are. But the church is the foundation of the nation. Amen. This is where this is where we learn. This is where we learn the principles going forward. But but I, but I will say this. Everybody should just be encouraged because God is in control. Once upon a time in Egypt, when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, he delivered the children of Israel out into the wilderness. Everybody complained. Why do we why do we follow him? What is going on? We, we're not going to eat. Uh, what about so and so? What about this? My, but everybody had a complaint. You know, God rained manna down so that they can have something to eat. So these spiritual principles are in play today, Sister Marvina, right yeah. now today as we speak. He, the Democratic Party is the party of Egypt. Amen. Ever since I've known, ever since I've known, you know, black Americans and black culture, black community, we all always voted for the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party uh, pretended as though they made. OK, and I think I've said this before. There's two ways to make a slave working without pay or you or you pay him and, and he don't have to work. So mm -hmm. and when you pay somebody that don't have to work, it becomes in their psyche. Yes. OK. What do I have to worry about? I'm going to get some money at the end of the month. What do I have to worry about? I'm already provided. God does not want us relying on the government because anything that the government gives us, there's something that they're taking away. And they have an ulterior motive for giving freebies. There's, oh, nothing, in this world free. there's nothing in this world free but salvation. If the government Amen. is giving you something, what they're doing is establishing control over you. And what happened is this curse of government control is passed on from one generation to the next because you vote Democrat because, oh, the Democrat Party is for the poor. No, the Democratic Party is for corruption. Amen. That's who they are. They for government control corruption. And here's the beauty. We're losing you there for a second. I'm going to give you a second to come back Beautiful in. Beautiful taking place. Okay, uh, no, uh, it's ugly what's taking place, but there's something beautiful on the horizon. Oh, and, you know, the sun shines every day. You know, it rains. Sometimes there's a tornado. And I've noticed that whenever Amen. the weather was horrible, the next morning when you look at it, it is beautiful. It, it, it's just the way the world works. Sometimes there's some pain, but the light will shine again, and you have to get that through your head. The, the, Go the ahead. light will shine again. Yes, the light will shine again. But here's the thing. Uh, we have to want the light to shine again. True. Our, our provisions are actually... Uh, the government cannot govern uh, things that... Just think about it. The government has established, will establish, establish control over something that they basically had no power over. They legislate everything that they have no power over. They don't grow food that grow. The government can't make that food grow. Mm -hmm. They have the same power we have is to plant the seed. They don't make that grow. God wants us to know that he's, he's alive. He's, he is and a reward of those that diligently seek him. Amen. Something I want to point out that I don't think a lot of people think of. They, they've gotten used to their welfare checks and their free government housing. It's not free. People pay for that. People like Jonathan, who is out working right now. People like me. We pay for that. And you have to remember, right. a government that gives you everything, can any point in time take it away? And where does that leave you That's if right. you're dependent? Right. Where does it leave does you? Leave? It, leaves you, it leaves you where most of these democratic cities are now, on, on, uh, with fires, homelessness, drug uh -huh. abuse, uh, high unemployment. Let's just talk about some facts. I have some facts up, and I just want to point this out because... A lot of uh, people say, oh, Democrats are for black people. They're for minorities. They're for the poor. Democrats are not for any of those groups. And it's apparent by just looking at the cities that are on fire right now 
and, and just where, if you just, this is an independent study, uh, basically in Forbes magazine. The top 10 cities in America that have homelessness are sanctuary cities, Democratic platform. Wow. Wow. So top 10, they are Los Angeles, 55,000 homeless, Seattle, 12,000, San Diego, nine, San Jose, 7,000, San Francisco, 6,000, and Las Vegas, 6,000. Now those numbers have grown since, I'm sure, since this article was produced last year. But that just gives wow. you an idea. If it's so healthy for, our populace, why are so many people homeless? Because if you have people that will work for pennies on the dollar, people that would have had those jobs, your low skilled workers, the working poor, are gonna end up on the streets. That's right, that's right. Uh, let me tell you something, every, every democratic state, how's, how's my audio? It's great. Okay, every democratic state has but one objective in that state. The Democratic politicians have wanted to destroy the middle class. And this is what they want to ultimately do for the entire United States. They are trying to destroy the middle class. When you destroy the middle class, you have more people dependent upon the government. And the government establishes more power. More power. True. This is what it's all about. It's not about racism whatsoever. It's about control and power. That's what I it's agree. about. I agree. Uh, every, every, uh, if they are for the poor, as the old Negro uh, cliche or myth that was passed on, the Democrats for the poor and the and the Republicans for the rich. Well, if there's ever a time, we know now that can, based on what you just read, based on facts, which was a uh, that recorded a year ago, and I know it's worse now. So, if that's what you call being for the poor. And you don't know what's going on at this point. I don't know what else to tell you. Let's talk about the top 10 most dangerous cities. They have something in common, too. They all have Democratic mayors. It, absolutely. They all have Democratic mayors. And, and, and all of those mayors was releasing prisoners from jail talking about the, the COVID. Well, yeah. if, they, if they quarantine already, why would you release them into society? How, how is it safe releasing them into society? Now we know all of this stuff that's taking place that Sean Rito Scott made a post about that. Now we know all of these Democratic uh, politicians in these different cities was speaking of some did. A lot of them did. A lot of them in California released prisoners, uh, mm -hmm. but most of them did. But now we know this was all planned. This was all planned. Everything was planned. The COVID, it it all was planned. Well, they had we to do something uh, to destroy the economy because everyone was doing well. They had to do everybody something. Everybody was doing. That's the worst thing they want is a president to come bringing prosperity. You know why? Because they they, they are demonic. What, what what? Let me tell you what Jesus said. He said, "It is my will that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers." So Amen. anybody anybody that comes in the name of prosperity. It's gonna get uh, it's gonna face opposition from the Antichrist because he is totally against prosperity. The Democratic Party is totally they are trying to destroy America and make America a third world country. So what you know, here's the crazy part, and they got people out here rioting, hoping that those people believe, and I'm sure they do, that the Democratic Party is on their team. You see, it, you see how they brainwash. They out there. I just saw a video where the Houston. I just saw a video where the Houston police chief was marching with the with the protesters. What he was doing was pandering. He was yeah. he, he want them to believe that they have a right to do what they're doing, and uh, he's on their side. Yeah, yeah, but he's on their side, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't. Hello, can you hear me? Oh yeah, no, you're coming in loud and clear, perfectly. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's on their side. But 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 he has a different motive, you know. He's playing a game with him. So the sad part about all this is that we don't know where this is going to lead. But we have to remain positive because the battle is already won. Amen. See, that's the good news. We have to remain positive because the battle is won. It's our, we say, "I have overcome the world." Okay, evil is a resource. So 
since evil is abound, since evil abounds right now, we'll use evil to get closer to God. Oh, it's making people That's wake all. up. It's making, it's, making people can't, wake. it's making people wake up. They have to realize that godly cities, conservative cities, conservative states aren't having these problems. Look at right. Detroit. Look at St. Louis. Look at Oakland. Look at Memphis, uh, Birmingham, Atlanta, Baltimore, Stockton, Cleveland, Buffalo. All of those cities are on this list of cities that are on fire right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like looking at it. It's those are all those same cities that have Democratic mayors. Why? Wow. And they are, they are allowing because the Democratic mayors are all bought and paid for. You mm -hmm. see. They had you thinking they for the poor, but who are these? They are for the poor. They want to make more poor. They, they want everybody they to be want poor. To make, exactly, exactly. That's what. Let me tell you something. These they're not lying to us. Are, they just people don't understand what they're saying. We are the party are not for the lying. poor. Yes. Yeah, everything they do is word. They use words and terminology. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil is tricky. Just like he tricked Ad, uh, uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden. You know, it sounds. Believable when the devil tell you, you know, yes. I mean? this is why it's very important. The devil is a very crafty guy and every the characteristics of the Democratic Party resembles Satan to the T. They even every took God they, out of the party. They even took God out. There. They booed God. Donald Trump said something at the State of the Union address that uh, I don't know if anybody caught it, but that that statement told me who he was <laughs> in the spiritual realm. Yeah, it, to, it told me. I, I don't know whatever he said. In America, we don't worship government. We worship, we worship God. Amen. Oh, did they get mad? That devil got mad. Had lips Ooh. poked out and everything. They were angry. <laughs> Ooh, and I was happy was and cheesing. When <laughs> and when Donald Trump said that, he held his head up like that. I said, ooh. <laughs> they That's when I knew we had did. a man in the White House. And it makes a difference. It really does when you have someone who is not scared to put people in their place or to do the right thing even when people do not like it. Even if he has to uh, face persecution. And, Amen. And, and, and let me let me tell you, God does not use anybody that's afraid of persecution. Everybody that God chooses is ready for the task at hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am grateful for Donald Trump. Uh, he has my vote. And I just, and I can tell you this, the only answer to this problem is to vote every single Democrat out of office. The people have Amen. power at the polls. These people are trying to, it's the reason they won't mail in ballots. Easier so to lie. Yes, yeah, so easier, it's easier to, lie. to steal, hide, hide them, and burn them. So yes. God, uh, he's already said that there won't be mail in ballots. Uh, some states have declared that there will be, such as California. But who needs California anyway? Uh, he didn't I say win let with them California. succeed. I say let the state succeed. They they won't make it on their own. They won't. They're the eighth largest economy in the world, but they cannot make it on their own. They are not self-sufficient like Texas. They don't no, know no, how to manage. Not. They don't know how to manage money. I want to bring up something else. A lot of people want to make this a race problem. Those top ten cities that I mentioned. Uh, Half the mayors, those Democratic mayors, are white, are black. and half are of white. them are black. So right, it's not right, a race right, right. problem. It has little to do with race. It's, it is a poverty and unemployment and violent crime problem, and they're all tied together. So when you vote against your own best interests, against policies mm -hmm. that hurt you, you cause poverty, you cause unemployment, and you cause violent crimes. When you don't have a populace that has an armed populace, what that means is when you can't carry a gun, police will bad police officers. And I want to clarify something. If you actually look at the number of violent uh, actions that have happened from police officers to the general public based on the sheer volume of police no, police officers and the number of people that are brought in, it is very low. I'm not saying that that justifies what happened to this man, but I want I want I want to put it into perspective. So all police are not bad. They're not. And no, people need no. to realize that and stop attacking everyone like they're they're basically racist. I hate all right. cops because this one cop did something. But you would be mad if someone said, I hate all black people because this one black person did right. something. See, people don't think like that. They can't see well, past me, the edge of their nose. Well, 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 let, well, let me say, well, let me tell you something. If what happened in Minnesota happened, that's a horrible thing. But 
just speaking on my behalf, I'm not sure about what really happened there. Uh, the Bible, the Bible tells us, "Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." The Bible basically tell us is telling us this to uh, don't believe anything that you didn't see with your own eyes or experience. You understand what yes. we're battling with? What we're battling with is the Satan is an illusionist. Mm -hmm. You understand? Satan is the greatest illusionist the world has ever seen. Satan will make show you something that you believe one thing and something else is going on. So, so at this point, uh, I, I'm not ready to believe any of it. Well, you can't. No, no, you cannot believe any of it. And uh, you have a lot of people getting to their emotions. That being lack of knowledge, knowing scriptures, and knowing how important Jesus is. The further we go along, the greater the deception will become. Yes. You understand? Mm-hmm. See, we got to be aware of that. The further we go, the greater the deception will become. So everything, a lot of things you see are not going to be real. However, your reaction is going to be real. But it's going to be something that didn't even take place. See, the devil's sole objective is to Kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. Destroy what? Everything that's due to you. That's due to you. Sole objective. So Amen. To understand where is Satan? What side is Satan? Where is he? Mm -hmm. No brother than the party that, that killed his baby. Margaret, Margaret Sanger, uh, Hillary Clinton said that was my hero. Margaret Sanger funded the KKK. Uh, she was a, a big donor in the Democratic uh, organization. So, you know, there's a lot of facts out there that has not been revealed to these people. And a lot of the us is we get out. Yes. See, people need to understand she about said, that. that we, are like human weeds. Human and, and, weeds. And, they're gonna, and, and they need to be ex exterminated. Exactly. And what does she do to get to that? She convinced black pastors, black pastors to help us kill our children. See, so you have to really look at the history of both parties. You have to look at history in general. If you don't want to affiliate yourself because you're scared that someone might say, oh, you're an Uncle Tom, first off, I invite or I, I beg everyone on here who doesn't know to read Uncle Tom's Cabin so you really understand that when someone calls you an Uncle Tom, it's a compliment. That just it's shows their ignorance. Compliment. Yeah, they don't know what the right. word means. They don't know what the book right. says, because if they did, they would never say that. Another thing I want to point out is that problems within society are directly related to people working. The top 25 most dangerous cities all have between 18 and 39 percent unemployment. The national average is under 12 percent. Well, it was. Wow, it might be perfect. higher now, but yes. So when you don't that's have a job... You don't prosper. You become more violent. Think exactly. about that. Right. Think about that. Right, right. And, and, and above all, you become more dependent. Yes. You know, and uh, this is what they want. They want you dependent upon them. So when you become dependent upon them, you are under their control. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the Democratic Party came out with the... Uh, the, the Great Society Act. Well, they came out with welfare and uh, public housing. Let me tell you about public housing. If a woman has the baby and she gets in public housing, the baby's father cannot stay there. You see the control? And and by law, if the, if the, uh, the man is caught there, something she can have her benefits taken away. So, so destruction of the family. It's destruction of the family. Now, is this godly? No, it's not godly. Why don't the church, why can't the church speak about that? And here's what I, here, let me just say this, Marvin. Here's what I want. I really, really want to, uh, you know, I have, our, our ministry, which is, you're a part of, our ministry, what, what, what I really want, I want a, I'm asking God to bless us with a building so that we can have church services and these things that you and I speak of, mm -hmm. I can speak to them face to face concerning these things. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the government. I'm not afraid of losing tax breaks, none of it. I'm not afraid of any of that. My, my, my allegiance is to Jesus Christ, and I trust him alone. It, uh, we will destroy our nation 
unless we start telling the truth. That's that's just the bottom line. And uh, the, the black churches in the black community have failed miserably. There is absolutely no excuse. In fact, these people are as bad as the enemy themselves. I think they're worse. Because they, they, they do it with smiles on their faces. It's a betrayal. It is, it is a, it's an in-your-face betrayal. I'm going to smile in your face knowing what I'm telling you is directly going to hurt you and keep you down and in poverty and in chains. I mean, there is no way to say this other than the Democratic Party is still the party of slavery. And if you don't understand when I, I, say, when I say that, what that actually means is you're basically, you went from owned by a slave to owned by the government. You went from living right. on a plantation to living in projects. Right. You went right, from right. the slave master sleeping with you and making you have children outside of wedlock to breaking up the family and having no man in the house at all. And then you went from the last one, from strange fruit on trees. If you don't know what that means, look it up because you need to know. From strange Amen. fruit on trees to you, the black mother, going in to Planned Parenthood and killing your own child. So, so they're still, they are still the party of slavery. They are still the party of segregation because when you go to projects, are they diverse? Most of the time no. not. They're not, no. they're not diverse. You see one no. group living in one area, another group living, in, they wanna keep you separate. So you can't right. talk, so you can't get to know each other, so you can't bond together and come up against them. Right. It's well, let me say, right, let me take it a, a step further. They, it, I like that. Actually, that's where I was going. They are the party of control. They are the party of Satan. They are the party of corruption. They have been that way since the very beginning. They are the party of Egypt. Amen. They are the party of Egypt. Make no mistake about it. Everybody with a name or influence endorses the left side why do they endorse the left side because their money is coming from the left side in Amen. some in some uh dynamic way they're getting paid by somebody that is a part of what's going on so what we have here is this is a pharaoh system right in our face this is the pharaoh system right in our face and then you have a president that said we don't worship government we worship god he comes in uh this is a this is a moses a cyrus all through the bible uh, the government oppress people and uh, because people choose leaders based on everything but the spirit. This Amen. is how they get themselves in trouble. So by grace, what grace does, grace touches the heart of those that can come and help, such as Donald Trump. All throughout the Bible, you had liberators coming to free people from people that they had chose themselves. Even when Jesus was being crucified, Right before he was crucified, Amen. they had a vote. They say, wouldn't it be him or Barabbas? The people chose Barabbas. God knew they was going to choose Barabbas. But guess what? Jesus was there to help them, not hurt them. Mm -hmm. But they thought, you know, that was political corruption. So the left side will always be corrupt, according to the scripture. Amen. When, when, let me tell you, so when Jesus rose from the dead, he arrived to the right shoulder of the father. Why did, why did they say left? <laughs> why, why, why did they say unto us a child is born and the government is going to be on his shoulders? It's not only just that, though. It's even in our language. When you ask a question to learn if it's correct, what do you say? Is that right? <laughs> Meaning, Thank is that you. correct? It's in listen, everything. Everything. Listen, it's in everything. The term right means right. Yeah. There's no different. It's used in different ways, but the term means the term right means right. If you don't get right, you're gonna get left. Yes. Come on. Amen. It's just too many uh analogies. It's too many uh I don't know what you call those, but let me tell you, <laughs> it's just simple. But here's what has happened: the Democratic Party has taken advantage. Here's what they they've studied the black people's spending habits, their, their characteristics, uh, their sex habits. Uh, they've studied us extensively. These people know, and what they've done has, has marketed the things that they've discovered. Okay? They've mm -hmm. marketed everything 
that they've discovered about black people. So the, it's terrible to let the enemy know you more than you know yourself. Amen. Wait a minute. Do I Speak. need to repeat that? Speak. Do, do I need to repeat that? Okay. You need to repeat that because that's very, that's very important and, and uh, that's what's going on. These people know us better than we know ourselves, much less them. You know who they are. You don't know who you are. Oh, have mercy. All you know is you're expendable because that's what they that's tell you. That's all you know. That's all you know. And, and here's the thing. Jesus Christ hates to see or to allow. See, here's the thing. Nothing, everything will happen to us unless we, unless we accept Jesus in our heart. Amen. Unless we accept Jesus as our Savior. Unless we accept Jesus as our mediator. You will be taken advantage of. Satan is an all-powerful force. Without Jesus, we cannot do anything. Amen. We can't do anything. And, and I'm not talking about speaking about him with your mouth. I'm talking about accepting him in your heart. Amen. But there's a whole lot of people that's going to claim. There's a whole lot of people. I'm 55 years old. I've heard people talk about Jesus, and a lot of them are being exposed right now. Do you hear me? Amen. Well, you know, the I, devil knows the Bible better than most believers. So Thank you. <laughs> thank you. The devil yeah. knows the Bible better than most believers. So at the end of the day, our answer is, is rather simple. The, the solution to our problems is rather simple. Get away from the Democratic Party. If God allows us America, if, if it's his will, if God, and I'm sure it is, if God allows America to be restored to sanity, we got work to do. 55, 55, 56 years of voting for the Democratic Party and aborting a whole nation. Black people are only 13% of the population and they don't even know why. How can you expect you, somebody to respect your life if you don't respect it? This has always been a very big problem for me. You want people to treat you as an equal and view you as the same and to respect you, but you don't even respect your own offspring. You don't even respect yourself. No, you can't. You don't respect, respect your body. You let you everybody sleep with you. You don't. I mean, even our famous people and people that people look up to, they, they look up to singers and rappers. What do and rappers call women? And what do rappers call women? Right. right. Yeah. Here's what they do. That is the worst. That is the uh that's the fuel that keeps this culture running. That's the fuel that keeps the culture Amen. running the, the culture running in the black community. The music. Now that's a whole nother story. Okay. Not only did the black church fail the black community, the black radio failed black community. Yeah. The black media and still are. Failed. Still and, and, are. And still are. See, this is the problem. I, just as I stated a few minutes ago. They know us better than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, they know you like music. They know you like the party. Yep. They know this. They know this. So it's like the Pied Piper. It's yes. like the Pied Piper. You know, play the flute, then they're going to follow me to the slaughter. And off the cliff. And off like the she... cliff. Yes. Let me tell you something. When Bloomberg was running... Uh, Mayor Turner hooked up with Bloomberg, and I, you know he got some kickback. And he was running around Houston opening little storefronts. Okay, you remember that he was going around Houston opening storefronts. Uh, I, I I turned on black radio just I like to spy. Cause see, if I want to listen to some music, let me tell you something. This device that I'm talking through, I can find anything I want to hear. So I don't mm -hmm. listen to radio at all. Good for I, you. The, the black radio is straight trash. So I I turned the, I turned the radio on to spy and. Bloomberg, they had about 20 Bloomberg commercials in a in a 30-minute period. I mean, all Democrat, all Democrat, all Democrat. Now, now ask yourself, why don't black radio uh, offer conservative opinions or offer uh, a black people a conservative choice? That's slavery. That's slavery <laughs> yes, if you is. don't give me but one option. And it's slavery from my own people. Well, you know, let's be real here. We're We're the... I hate to say it, but we're the worst to ourselves. The self-hatred within our culture is is it's disgusting. I mean, it's to the point where one, we call each other outside of our names, then we get mad at a white person for saying that word that everyone takes such offense to. 
But I can't go into a black community and walk around and not hear it. And, and then they say, well, we say it affectionately. No, there's nothing affectionate about calling someone the N-word. There's nothing affectionate about that. It's an insult. <laughs> yes, it is. There, there's nothing affectionate about calling people that. Yet you get mad if somebody else call you that. Yeah. Or if, if a white person call you that. You know, you, you see how you see how indoctrination have made you. It's almost like mind control. It is it's mind control. Like mind it's in the commercial, so, so, in the so radio thing. Yes, it's there. There's absolutely no recourse for mind control but Jesus Christ. Amen. It's up here. It's in the spirit. You know, I don't spirit. let my kids watch TV and people go, oh, that's mean. You don't let your kids watch TV? No, I got to screen everything they watch because there's subliminal messages in TV programs. There's subliminal messages in cartoons and family out there. Stop buying Disney. Stop taking your kids to those movies. Stop letting them watch the Disney Channel. It is horrible. I agree. I agree. You're I not agree. doing we them any to, uh, favor. I, what we have to do, we have to do everything that God told us not to do. We have to not do it. We have to not do it. At this point, there is no, there is no in between. At this point, there is no compromising. At this point, because here's the thing: we most people have children, and most people love their children. You know, most people love their children. You know, I hate to, I hate the thought that we would leave this country in a mess. You know, well, they're, already in debt. they're already in debt. I mean, <laughs> they're already in debt. I mean, yeah. it's really sad. So, you know, sometimes when you reach a point to where you can no longer control it, you just got to. Uh, this is why everybody's going to humble themselves to Jesus, because it's going to get to the point where, you know what? Hey, I can't do this. I can't do this no more. Amen. You're going to humble your heart. Everybody going to humble their heart. Everybody love their children. Everybody love it. They're going to humble their heart. They, go, they need to realize that their future, their future is being burned up in these democratic cities. The future of your children, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever city you live in, if it's Democrat and they tearing it up, that's what they care about your kids. Amen. And you that's gotta live there. You gotta you live have, there. You have yeah. to live there. It's, it's really it's insane. Jonathan, what is wrong with people? I, I honestly, I can I, I really cannot wrap my mind around how you can't look at things objectively and go, all of these problems, every single one have one factor. One factor. All of them match up. And that factor is, one, they've removed God over all. And two, they're all led by Democrats. So if everything can be pointing to one direction. Wouldn't you just turn right. the other way? What, what, I mean, what, what, I, I don't know. If I saw fire, I would turn the other direction. Right, right. It's uh, Everything's out in the open at this point. Everything's out in the open. <laughs> we, have but one, we have but one option. Get Donald Trump reelected and make sure every Democrat, every single one of these Democrats, don't fall for this trick like like they down like they on your side burning the place down and you want justice. They the problem. It's Amen. a game. It's a game of control. It's a mind game. That's what it, it is. is. It's a total mind game of control coming from, and most of these people are subject to hire like your George Soros and your Bill Gates. These people have bought these politicians up. So these politicians are dancing to their drum beat. So what we have to do, the people, this country belongs to the people. We have one option. Is to go to the polls and vote them all out. Vote them all. What out. do you have to lose? We'll deal. We will. What do we have to lose? That's that's. A, I love that statement. And, what do we uh, have to lose? and we'll deal with Republicans uh, uh, as, as when we get problems with them. But get those Democrats out as soon as we as soon as November. Everybody go register to vote and get those people out. I don't care what city you in. Get these people out and let's begin rebuilding. Our nation for our children that's coming behind us. And I want to and say something. Go ahead, sister. That. I just want to say that, and this is going to hurt some feelings, and honestly, I don't care because you still need to hear the truth. Every person in Minnesota that voted Democrat had their knee on Georgia's throat. I need you to understand that. It was your voting pattern that caused that man to die. 
It was the fact that you had Democratic leadership that That's caused deep. that man to die. <clears throat> That's what caused him to die. The fact that you did not value yourself enough in order to make a decision based on fact, based on values, based on God. So you had your knee on his neck. You are responsible. That's right. And you are responsible That's for right. every child that's dying there. You're responsible for every building because it's only happening in places that have that leadership. Ask yourself why. If, if conservative areas are so bad, right. why aren't they being burnt down? Why aren't people protesting there? And when they are, people are saying, I disagree with what happened to him. No man should die that way, but it's peaceful. And they're not burning down other people's businesses and destroying the areas that they live in. Now, some will argue it is not necessarily the people that live there, but it's some of the people that live there. Yes, George Soros, was goons, Antifa, and Black Lives Matter. For those of you that don't know, 80% of Black Lives Matter is white. Not that race or complexion should matter, but they're just hired thugs. So that's what they are. You need to know that. Black lives don't matter to black people because if they did, they wouldn't vote the way that they are. That's just the reality of it. Right, right, right. They're just higher, so, and they can care, and they can care less about black lives. No. But yes. The proof is in the pudding. If black lives matter to black people, like you said, they wouldn't vote the way they are. And half of are white. So, do you really think that this organization was started to help you? You got to be. Exactly. Excuse me. You're cutting in and out a little bit, but no, I can hear you pretty good. What it is, is this hard to be, there's not going to be any critical thinking. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Did I break out? Just a little bit. I okay, heard yeah. critical thinking. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, they, yeah, they take advantage of us because they know we don't, that's a skill that we don't practice. It's not taught in school anymore. Taught. We've got a generation no, of. Of, of indoctrinated children who have no, they have, we have a generation that has no fathers at home. One big problem. Ann Coulter, who a lot of people hate, says something that was brilliant. She says, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what social economic background you come from. The best thing that a child could ask for, for success is a two parent opposite sex household. I want yep. you to think about that one. So That's God right. made yep. Adam and Eve. Right. The balance is okay. there. Right. The balance is there. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. And also, God also says, a man that finds the thing. Amen. So uh, now that's coming out of the mouth of God. So uh, the family structure is very important in success, uh, building the foundation of success in America. And th this African American culture stuff, this stuff is not even America. But see, you. You people, our ancestors touched ground right when uh, the uh, the discoverers came to America. Um, that's a term for them. I can't think of the term. But why do we call ourselves African American? That, that makes no sense. Why would we, why do we put African in front of our home? Africa done away with us. They didn't want nothing to do with us. They saw value in trading us to somebody to become slaves. See, this is where sl slavery started anyway. See, America didn't start slavery. America ended slavery. That's what America did. America ended slavery. They didn't start slavery. So uh, this African-American stuff, because they want you to be proud of where you came from and be mad about where you was delivered to. That's a, that's a trick from the devil. Think about that. God delivered you from slavery. You are the beneficiaries of what they went through, but you mad. You better not die like that. I, I talked to a lot of Africans, too, and I've had them tell me that they would never marry an African-American woman, if you want to say that, because they're tainted. They're not pure. So they look down upon you. Many of them do. And that is the sad reality. Like it, dislike it, but that's just the truth. We were sent over here as slaves. We got our freedom. It has been a long time and most of That's the reasons why we're still having problems is not mm. because of the fact that you cannot be successful in america it's because you are not successful in your brain you can't there's no more chains but you still are in chains in your brain because there are some people that won't like you 
they might not like you not because of the color of your skin, but because you have stinky breath. They might not like you because you're too tall, you're too skinny, whatever it may be. So there's always going to be somebody that's going to discriminate against you. It happens, but there's plenty of doors open. So if it's you are always, a failure in all. the United States, it's because you chose to fail. That's the reality of it. Reality of it. If yeah, Africans can come here, Africans can come here with nothing. And I mean, absolutely nothing. And within five years, these are, I'm speaking about Nigerians. Look up, look it up, look it up, check it, check it out, see it. You're going to be shocked. If they can come here within five years and be in the top 15% of income earners in the United States of America, racism is not a problem. Do we have racists? Yes, we have racists, but racism is not a problem. Right, 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 right. Racism is not a stronghold. That no. stronghold, that stronghold was broken. Okay, that stronghold. See, one thing you'll never do, you'll never, you're, you cannot make nobody uh, love you. Okay, mm -hmm. so God didn't give you that responsibility because you don't have that power. God said you love them. That's what He said. The power is the love. The power is within yourself to make changes. You cannot mm -hmm. become what it is you hate. Based to walking in unforgiveness is the result of becoming what it is you hate. When you walk in unforgiveness, you cannot legislate people's heart. No, you understand? Yeah. Yo, 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 your whole love fulfills the law. This is why we're here. We're here to love, and not just love people that love us. God wants to see can we love people that's a, that's a, that that's hard to love. You understand? Know that's where that's where the glory is. That's where the power of love is manifested when you can love people that you think don't love you or for whatever reason or don't like you. And it's not just white. People. I grew up around black people. I'm 55 years old. I went to a black elementary school. I, I, well, I started off, I went to private school. But then I, but, but basically what I'm saying is I've had a lot of experience in the black community. I've had a lot of experience in the black community. None of my problems came from no white person. <laughs> I'm 55 years old. So what y'all marching about? What did I miss? Was I asleep? I've never had a problem with, uh, uh, I've never had a problem with racism. If I did, it went over my head. I didn't even catch it. You know why? Because I'm not looking for it. I'm not looking for it. Amen. And racism doesn't prevent you from, I mean, here's the thing. You could say, I had every strike against me that you could think coming up. According to what people say, I was black, I was female, uh, I'm handicapped, so I'm, I'm so six foot four, mm -hmm. I'm intimidating. I weigh 240 pounds. I'm a linebacker. So I shouldn't have been successful. I had everything that you could say, this person is not going to amount to much in life. But I have right. something that a lot of people don't. I have faith. Oh, come on now. I have faith. Just, and and God will take you through some things to make you learn and to prepare you for problems you may have to overcome through him. Amen. So there is absolutely no reason why anyone born in this country cannot be successful and not be rich. And I don't necessarily mean financially. I mean rich in the Holy Spirit and happy heart because I Amen. live in a community of filthy, rich, unhappy, pill popping, fake breast having, hair puff for men, right. skin tanning people who are so miserable that they sometimes even commit suicide. That's how miserable they are. But they got beautiful homes. Right. They have nice cars, but right. they have ugly, broken hearts right. without God. Right. Amen. Amen. There, there, is, there is no material solution to a spiritual problem. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> huh? Oh, I got a compliment. I appreciate it. You yeah, know, that, that, that's the problem, too, with us. We, we are all caught up in what everybody else thinks about us as opposed to what God thinks about us. The only person I care about. Right. Right. It's what he thinks. What he thinks. Everybody else. That's your That's opinion don't matter. <laughs> but but look, 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 think about this now. Uh since you said that, now you see how fundamental that is? This is not being taught in church. You know what's being taught in church? The white man owe you. It's the boogeyman, the white man, and we fighting racism. It's time to learn. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm everything sorry. God, everything God created is good. You know, this is fundamental. This is the first, the second uh scripture in the Bible, in Genesis. He said everything that I made was good. So it's a shame that all this stuff here is not being taught. Uh, I mean, this is the basic, most fundamental 
principle. God made everything good. So mm -hmm. why, 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 why should we feel like that we're less than anybody because they're a different skin tone? And they're first still all, brown. They're still brown. All, first of all, here's the here's the here's the misconception right here. You wasn't enslaved because you was black. No. You see. When people understand that you, they didn't make you a every slave. Every race has been a slave. Every, every race. race. It's, it's, it's the Irish people at, were slaves. It, I mean, it, thank you. Everybody was a. Let me tell you something. Like I said, everybody migrated to America at one time or another, and from one place or another. It's because they was leaving government oppression. Mm -hmm. They wanted to experience freedom, liberty. They wanted to experience what the children of Israel were experiencing. So what you have here is a bunch of people in America that's that's born. In, in the greatest country in the world, complaining about something that they've already been given. You know what I'm saying? Because, because they think, oh, I was a slave because I was black. You was a slave because you was available. You know what I'm saying? The harder man, anybody will enslave you. If a, if a, a, a woman is selling her body on the street, she got a man watching her, guess what he is? He's a slave master. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you go buy, and he black probably, and, and you go and buy some drugs from a man that you got to go get every day. Guess who he is that they're selling you the dope? He your slave master. Because he ain't got to work. He know you coming. So slavery come in many forms. It does. So this is the message that needs to, to get out. Uh-oh, we are running out of time. We got four minutes left. <laughs> We're having a good conversation, though. I want to say that what you really need to understand is nobody owes you anything but non-aggression. They don't owe you anything. All they Correct. need to do is let you fall or rise on your own accord. If you fall, that's on you. Take that's responsibility right. for it. Hold yourself accountable and get up like that Aaliyah song said, dust yourself off and try again because that's what you have to do. You know, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Colonel Sanders, he fell so, so many times. Michael Jordan, he got kicked off his basketball team. Michael Jordan, because right. right. he couldn't play, but he practiced. Right. Amen. Amen. So there's no excuse. God Amen. will provide if you allow him in your life and allow him to lead you and carry you through the tough times. Amen. And for without faith, it's impossible to please God. For Amen. we walk by faith and not by sight. Everything. Listen, all, you can do whatever you want to do in this life in America, long as you're given the opportunity. And your faith is what makes it work because God loves you. And that's the only way to please him. Hey, guys, I have, I have to stop because I have to... Uh, do my clock, and I have to run in the store. But uh, Sean, if you're listening, uh, when when I finish this, I'll give Marvina the last uh, statement, and then we'll and then we'll close. But uh, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in, and I'm glad that we was able to get this show off with me driving, and was able to keep some uh, internet service. So I, I mean, you know, it could have been worse, but I'm grateful that most of what I said was uh, you only fail and you give up, and don't try because I'm scared of failure. Exactly. Failure is a part of success. Nobody, nobody be, be becomes great without failing. Failure is a yes. exactly in practice. So failure is a uh, failure is a resource. So it's nothing to uh, to be upset about or, or to not try again. Always, you live in the greatest country in the world. But here's the thing: we got to keep it like that because everything that we're talking about is going to be a thing in the past. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we if we don't vote right, if we don't get all those Democrats. Democrats out nationwide, America, you know, we won't have these opportunities that we preach about. Well, this has been a wonderful time. Marvina, I'm going to give you the last take and, and thank you for this show tonight. We are on this show every Saturday at 9 p.m. Central. Anybody want to check us out, come through and check us out. We're going to keep doing this until things are, until we make some changes with God's help. But uh, go ahead, sis. I just want to say that we are not Republicans against Democrats. We are not Christians against atheists. We are not blacks against whites. We are Americans against communism. That is what we are. We are an entire group of people with different beliefs, different cultures, but we have one thing in common. We have the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And if you like having those freedoms where you make your own decisions, where no one tells you when you can leave your home, that you have to wear a certain garment, that you can't exercise your free will, then you need to get the people who want to control you, those Pharisees, out. You need yep. to vote your values. You need you to, to vote, vote American values. heritage. Yeah, our kids need our kids are dependent on this. 
Let's be wise. Let's be wise and thank God for people like Marvina and others that, and myself, of course, uh, mm -hmm. speaking out and getting the truth out. Let's be wise, y'all. Our future, our country, our freedom is all hangs in a balance and, it, and it's based on how we decide in November. Let's get out there and get all those Democrats out so we can rebuild our country the way God wants it to be. We love y'all. Thank y'all. We went over five seconds. Talk to you later, Marvina. God bless. Talk to you God later. Bless, Join you tomorrow, 7 p.m. for another great show. God bless. Tomorrow, 7 p.m. Amen. Bye-bye, y'all. Ciao.